Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station. What if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. <coughs> Twice this week, Revolution Radio YouTube channel has been hit by the FBI twice this week. Revolution's YouTube channel was hit by the FBI. That is under investigation through the United States court, of course. It's not such a bad wage for a week. $33 billion is the going rate for espionage against a sovereign state, according to our fee schedule. We'll see how that works out for everybody. For MotherJones.com today, fundraising effort for Ferguson Cobb, who shot Michael Brown, gets ugly. It appears that the majority of those donating to this racist cop are gasp racists. Of course, there's nothing uglier than racism. And this war upon humanity, perpetrated by corporate counsel attorneys and their army of thugs known as federal agents. Interesting play on the racism card this last couple weeks, as Congress attempts once again to promote a civil war. And according to all of the reporting sources. Humanity, once again, is not racist. Humanity, once again, is not hell-bent on the destruction of itself. And once again, Congress, General Counsel, Corporate Counsel, and yet the minions that work for them have evidenced themselves to be perpetrating genocide for the betterment of national security. Again, evidencing espionage. Once again, coming upon humanity. How many times does this need to occur before Congress becomes a citizen of somewhere else away from its ability to harm humanity? From the NPR.org this day, is there such a thing as a good psychopath? Hate to be a spoiler, but NPR says no. It's a great read. NPR again today. Breaking news. British burned Washington two centuries ago. They didn't have to this time. Congress did it all by themselves, directing hits on children and cashing in on death derivatives. It's hedging that bet with hedge funds as a form of insurance. I have news for you. Cover hold insurance does not cover acts of war or civil war risks. Evidencing that once again, Congress, General Counsel, Corporate Counsel, and the minions working so feverishly to discharge that congressional bankruptcy are all without their insurance.
Great days on the stock market. Today, stock market hit a record high and reporting sources say nobody's celebrating. Why not? It's a great time for somebody. Somebody's having a, a laugh at these market conditions. UK offers 6.5 million pounds for emergency Ebola research. Thankfully, seems America's gone missing from many things this last week. Researchers around the world are being offered 6.5 million pounds to find ways to save the lives of people affected by the world's worst Ebola outbreak. This is from RT.com. Welcome Trust Director Dr. Jeremy Farrar says the gravity of the Ebola epidemic demands an urgent response. Quote, we believe rapid research into humanitarian interventions and therapeutics can have an impact on treatment and containment during the present outbreak, Bear said in a statement. Expert teams from around the world are being invited to submit research proposals by September 8th for initiatives that can investigate new approaches for treating, preventing, and containing the disease. As of Wednesday, the number of deaths from Ebola had reached 1,350, according to the World Health Organization. Interesting days. America's gone missing. President Obama showed up in Ferguson, Missouri to offer what appeared to be nothing and then went off to greener pastures as he dealt with the uh, his investment into the Iraq conflicts. Let's see how that works out. It's interesting to see that in between his golfing schedule and whatever else kind of vacation he's got going on that he can spend a little time with the sheep while he pretends to care about and adore. North Korea News today. NorthKoreanews.org Unreported large-scale meeting took place in Pyongyang, source. Up to 150 buses transported VIP delegations across Pyongyang. A multi-day large-scale meeting has taken place in Pyongyang since the weekend, which uncharacteristically has not yet been reported by North Korean state media, a source in Pyongyang has told NK News. The meeting, which saw 100 to 150 buses trafficking delegates across the city from Saturday through to Wednesday had the characteristics of being, and I can't read the rest because I haven't subscribed to North Korean news, but uh, 150 buses full of uh, what appear to be trafficked nationals. It's an interesting article coming out of North Korea news this day. I don't know how many nationals you can fit in one bus. Sounds like a lot of them. St. Louis police released video of Kami Powell killing that appears at odds with their story. It's being reported all over this day. All over. Military cadet facing Anzac Day sexual assault charge. ABC.net.au is reporting this afternoon. Sick. Sick news. An army member is facing a sexual assault charge over an incident involving a colleague on Anzac Day evening this year and the latest misconduct allegation to hit the defense force. The offense, which is alleged to have happened 
at an army base in Canberra is being looked into by the Australian Defence Force Investigative Service. That's a nice name. Fairfax Media is reporting that a Royal Military College, RMC, cadet has been charged with rape and assault of a female cadet and is due to appear in court next month. It comes after an Australian Defence Force Academy or ADFA cadet appeared in Canberra court earlier this week accused of sexually assaulting two 19-year-old female cadets. Psychopaths. The absolute psychopath. I like that story on NPR today. Is there such a thing as a good psychopath? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. CNN says the rumor that Michael Brown fractured Darren Wilson's eye socket is false today. They reported as on Slate.com. Having to post is asking a question. Why won't police release Michael Brown incident report? We've been releasing everything else. I'd like to know who their director was. Very much like to know who the director was of this child's death. Al Jazeera contributor leaves Ferguson. Quote, we should all be ashamed. <laughs> Researchers find crow is hard to chew in recent study then. <laughs> oh my goodness. Israeli Prime Minister today on his Twitter account has reported that Hamas and ISIS are the same individual operating under different disguises. It's interesting to see that tweet. New York Times asks, where are the National Democrats in Ferguson? Where are your representatives? Where's Senate in the House? Where is everybody while you're at war with your local law enforcing policy and adhering to the directives of corporate counsel to be at war with you? Where, where are they? Where, where is this United States of America? while you're being slaughtered in the streets and barcoded by these attorneys cashing in on each and every diagnosis as per my conversation with Scott K. Summers, corporate counsel and the conservator for one of those such counties he clearly stated in the audios that uh, he requires a diagnosis in order to discharge congressional bankruptcy. That means that Michael Brown and other children have to die in order to be diagnosed as dead. I'm very sorry to bring such news to you, but without knowing what Nazi Germany is, most don't realize they live there. Officer suspended indefinitely after pointing gun at Ferguson protester. This is being reported today. And it was very interesting to see. Uh, it says it's a video, and this is at the WallStreetJournal.com. I'm not going to go there because it will open up the uh, player. Rick Perry. Oh, Rick Perry. Rick. Poor, poor, poor Ricky. Rick Perry's under indictment, of course, and that means so, so many things. One of those things is that he starts screaming about possible infiltration by terrorists. Oh my gosh, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Look over there. Don't look at the guy behind the curtain. Look over there. ISIS might attack us at any moment. Be scared. I'll protect you. I'm the governor. Be scared. Hate each other. Be divided. I 
I'm the general counsel. I don't make any money. If you're not pit against each other, and if you're not fearful, wherein you need me to protect you. Rick Perry says, look out for any potential boogeyman whilst he is under indictment. Don't look at the guy behind the curtain. You don't want to do that, do you? You want to know what's really going on behind the scenes? You don't want to know what the truth is? You don't want to know that your very own corporate counsel is out to get you? You don't want to know that. You want to, you want to be asleep and collecting those retirements <laughs> that you'll never see because the same corporate counsel sticks IRS on you to collect it before it happens. That is the action of interpleading. That's why it's there. Abatement of a freehold. Somebody, an interpleader, comes in before an inheritance can happen and puts a claim on it before the heir can ever, ever get there. That's why you find yourself in probate court. Oh, but there's a will. Yes, that will allows the attorney to have jurisdiction. No more writing wills. Why is that? Well, your heir is already the heir before you fill out that piece of paper. The minute you fill out that piece of paper, that document, file it with an attorney, you're inviting that attorney to be a third party to your estate. You're asking its permission to give your property away to your heirs. And they've had a good thing going all this time, raising humanity. It's the operation of law to lay down. Literally, law means to lay down. Keane says he was punched in his jaw while being arrested during protests in Ferguson. This is from the dissenter.firedoglake.com. Again, evidencing much, much more racism. Now, the attorneys and their corporations have polluted everywhere. Consumer Reports today is reporting pregnant women should avoid all tuna. Now, if you go over to the Codex Alimentarius and look in their indexes, you'll find that they've been putting mercury in the tuna for a very long time. Well, what purpose does that serve? That sterilizes the male. And it's a very, very, very soft cell measure by consent, because you're consuming these things at depopulation. It's also forced breeding because once the male is sterile, the female has to go into IVF. It's a very, very lucrative market. Very lucrative market. Over on MothersDrones.com, again, these 11 popular sodas tested positive for potential carcinogens. I urge everybody to go over there and again to the Codex Alimentarius. You are consuming in your everyday used condiments uh, sodium benzoate, calcium benzoate, and potassium benzoate on a daily basis. These metabolize right into benzodiazepine the minute you consume anything else with oxygen in it. And that means that everybody's doped up on. Xanax, Valium, Seroquel, it depends on how much of this stuff you're eating. The concentration amount of these benzodiazepine. We talked about the meeting. BuzzFeed this week reported 14 famous people with Kim Jong-un's haircut. I thought that was really cute. Officer in Ferguson, Mox Ron Johnson, says he wants to punch Eric Holder, as reported on Slate. These are some violent folks. 
over on VOZ.com, V-E-O-O-Z.com, top judge says mothers should have children taken away if they don't let fathers see them. Well, absolutely, that's a form of abuse. And it goes deeper than that. It goes way deeper than that. If you view your child as an object in any way and use them for benefit in any way and basically human traffic your children by accepting benefit for their existence with knowledge and intent to do so, you will be charged for such. Got a new game out. Uh, it's called Glorious Leader, a video game starring Kim Jong-un himself. Well, this was very interesting. I mean, his country is just glowing. They're developing, building houses. Um, tourism market looks just absolutely amazing. This report on this game is from the PalmBeachPost.com. Glorious Leader video game starring Kim Jong-un. And uh, it sounds like an interesting game. Nice market. Having to post to the very, very beautiful story today called Let's Clear Up Some Lies About What You've Been Told About Vaginas. It's very interesting to see Huffington Post getting back to nature. Noranda Modi is to replace India's planning commission. Uh, this is being reported by the New York Times today. And that's something very profound, very profound. We'll see how that uh, works out. Off-duty Mulfi's Burrow school bus driver allegedly pulls weapon in a road rage incident. I mean, psychopaths are everywhere, aren't they? City of Murfreesboro school bus driver has been arrested after allegedly pulling out a gun during a, an alleged road rage incident. 41-year-old Robin Lee Snyder was apprehended shortly after explaining the situation to police. WGN's Rafferty Cleary has more on the story of the incident. Verbatim, sorry. The incident occurred on South Church Street at I-24. Snyder was driving her personal vehicle and not a school bus. Snyder stated that she got into a verbal altercation with another driver. The altercation was a result of the other driver reportedly cutting her off as she was exiting the interstate getting onto South Church Street. Snyder admitted to police that she brandished her weapon in oops, that she brandished her handgun to him attempting to get away. Yeah, that's why she got out of her vehicle. She was scared in the first place. That's why she got out of her vehicle with a weapon. <laughs> the other side of the story told officers she held up a weapon and told them that's good. That's a good way to get shot. And quote, because Snyder pulled out a gun during the incident by her own admittance, she was charged with aggravated assault. Snyder bonded out of jail on Wednesday morning. Very interesting to see. It didn't work for her to play the victim. Aww. It's so sad for her. That's so sad. There's more on this link with uh, abortion and breast cancer this week. Fred Nile draws link between abortion and breast cancer as well on smh.com.au, Australian. And um, it was nice to see. Very nice to see um, that this is being uh, presented, the truth is being presented to females so that they can make a conscious decision. You know, it's bad enough that they would allow um, abortion, of course. But I wonder if they stop when, if they knew that it was harmful for their body too and that they were not just killing a, uh, an infant. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I, mean, I haven't seen any of the numbers change since the last report. So apparently uh, suicide is a good option for these females that collectively enjoy uh, abortion services.
this last week, um, I, I was remembering um, a victim of the federal state, and um, I wanted to go and visit that story again because back in May, prior to uh, Michael Brown being shot, there was a very horrifying murder that occurred in Florida. This is on the MiamiHerald.com, and the headline is, Behind Bars, a Brutal and Unexplained Death. The purported details of Darren Rainey's last hour are difficult to read. Quote, I can't take it no more. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. End quote. He screamed over and over, according to a grievance complaint from a fellow inmate, as Rainey was allegedly locked in a shower with the scalding water turned on full blast. A 50-year-old mentally ill inmate at the Dade Correctional Institution, Rainey was pulled into the locked shower by prison guards as punishment after defecating in a cell and refusing to clean it up, said the fellow inmate who worked as an orderly. He was left there unattended for more than an hour as the narrow chamber filled with steam and water. When guards finally checked on prisoner number 060954, he was on his back and dead. His skin was so burned that it had shriveled from his body, a condition referred to as slippage, according to a medical document involving the death. But nearly two years after Rainey's death on June 23, 2012, the Miami-Dade County Medical Examiner has yet to complete an autopsy, and Miami-Dade police have not charged anyone. The Florida Department of Corrections halted its probe into the matter, saying it could be restarted if the autopsy and police investigation unearthed new information. What new information do you need? A prisoner was cooked inside of your prison to the extent that the skin was slipping exactly identical to any other piece of meat that is cooked in an oven or in a scalding, boiling hot water situation. For those just tuning in to leaving the farm, these are the actions of German Stasi agents. The mentally infirm was gassed, put in front of firing squads, and these things occurred during Nazi Germany, exactly as they have been occurring here. However, as we covered earlier in the program, you have been doped up. Psychiatrists recently admitted to putting lithium in your water and now studying the effects to determine if you are less suicidal. That means that they are determining your complicity. They want to know the level of your compliance. If you can't take it on the farm anymore, you commit suicide. If your suicide rate goes down, well, they've reached the perfect lithium amount in the water and again for those just turning in Aldous Huxley spoke of this back in the 60s and said within another generation everyone's going to be compliant they're going to look the other way while prisoners are cooked inside of prison by prison guards. They're going to look the other way when my 18-year-old child is gone down on the streets in Ferguson, Missouri at the directives of corporate counsel. Are you going to look the other way now?
Are you going to continue to patronize this thing that's killing you? This man had never harmed anybody when he was cooked. Otto Zem. Years ago, before I was attempted on and uh, forced to leave my own home, I lived in Stevens County, Washington. 50 miles north of Spokane, Washington. And ironically, a couple sheriffs got caught messing with kitties. Mayor got caught messing with kitties. One of those sheriffs was moved north about 50 miles, three miles below my house to Deer Lake, Washington at a Salvation Army youth camp after they found that they were abusing boys at the boys ranch. Mayor West ended up dying of cancer. One of the sheriff blew his head off, but the other sheriff was transferred out of sight, out of mind, about 50 miles north of Spokane. Why I started toot my own horn, and I went to the FBI, and I went to the local sheriff, and I'll be dang the next thing I know I'm being attempted on, and all my brothers and sisters are dying like crazy. I'm not the brightest thing in the box, but uh realized after a while that uh, there's something going on here that doesn't match the description of the United States and of America. Something is up in Rome. <laughs> so I left it. And I stopped registering because one of the things, I'll, I'll go back a little bit to um, when that guy attempted on me, they, they listed it as domestic violence on one side, but under the administrative code I was listed as an animal and I had been injured by another farm animal on their farm. And I realized then, of course, that the Violence Against Women Act is Nothing but a privacy law intended to protect those who abuse. That guy ended up being an informant or having something against him over his head. Sheriff Thayer, there is mighty, mighty kind to a female for the next forever. 2009 through, well, forever. I was subject to hell. So I want to go back to Otto Zem because of this thing in Ferguson, which is the same thing in every county, everywhere, as our children are listed as suicides, one car accidents, and gunned down accidentally by cops the directives of corporate counsel. You can go back through my own audios, my own journey. Thomas Herbs was left hanging in his dad's garage on Father's Day 2009. He was murdered the same way. It was the same process. was killed to discharge congressional bankruptcy. Thomas Herbs was already a product of the state. His mother, very, very specialized, was a fourth grade special education teacher in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, was drawing on the account. Thomas Herbs was diagnosed as sexually abused when he was younger. 
and his mother was never charged. Robert Holstra, the priest, was never charged. Stephen Cray, the judge, one of them, and former prosecuting attorney, was never charged. Cameron Isaacson, who was holding everything together, was never charged. And Todd Johnson, the cop who killed him, was never charged. The cop who killed him, of course, ended up taking the rope evidence out of evidence in his own hand in a police report after these things occurred and he postured first to set up what looked like a suicide. I was there, there's burn marks on the, the wood from where the body was hoisted up after Thomas was killed by corporate counsel's minions. Otto Zem's Wiki page was born in 1970 and passed away in 2006. Otto Zem was a mentally disabled man from Spokane, Washington, who died on March 20th, 2006, two days after being beaten, tasered multiple times, hogtied, gagged, and sat upon by seven Spokane police officers until he passed out and never regained consciousness. Zem committed no crime, and on May 30th, 2006, the Spokane County Coroner ruled the death a homicide. No officer has been charged. Corporate counsel got away with another murder. I was there during that time. He was carrying a bottle of Pepsi. Walk a mile. These are the same folks that tasered a guy off of a bridge in Spokane a couple years ago. He was threatening to commit suicide, so they helped him. Cashed in on it. better pay if if they look like they're trying to tase or save somebody instead of tasing them to death don't they look like heroes oh we lost another one we gave it our best though gave it our best before there was a 50 50 chance that that guy would commit suicide but after the teasing, there was a 100% chance, an opportunity for corporate counsel to cash in. Maya Aiton White, Ferguson shooting victim, says police have not interviewed her. This is on the blogs, riverfronttime.com. Here's what Maya Aiton White remembers from the night of August 12th. It was about 11 p.m. She was walking back to her car on Highmont Drive near the burnout quick trip after attending a Mike Brown rally in Ferguson. There were a few people in front of her. Suddenly, shots rang out. Everybody dropped to the ground and covered their heads. When she sat up, Aiton White knew something was wrong. Quote, oh my God, you're shot in the head, she recalls a young man telling her. Several young men carried her to a nearby house where the residents called 911. She says police officers, she believes they were St. Louis police, interviewed her briefly before she was taken to the hospital. She was able to take the above photo in the ambulance and upload it to Instagram. It went viral. Now, a little over a week later, Aunt White wants to know why no one in law enforcement has followed up with her about her case. Stranger still, she says she doesn't know what happened to the bullet the doctors removed from her skull. Quote, someone has a bullet. Someone has a bullet and it was an officer, says her attorney, Maron Porter. Aiden White is a St. Louis native who lives in Florissant. 
She said she's a great granddaughter of local jazz legend Mae Whaler and works at a law firm. She said she went out on Thursday, Tuesday night in support of Michael Brown's family. The bullet lodged against her skull near the middle of her forehead. Aiden White says it took doctors about a day to decide that it was safe to remove it. She says when she woke up from surgery on Wednesday evening, August 13th, the doctors and nurses told her police officers came and confiscated the bullet as evidence. As she recovered, she says she waited for those officers to return and do a full interview about the incident. Quote, I would ask every day while I was there, did anyone from the police department come? Have they called for me? Are they going to be here today? And quote, and nobody could give me an answer. Media reports have characterized Eaton White's shooting as a drive-by. Eaton White says she didn't see a car or a weapon, and the only four or five black young black men she observed were the ones who brought her to safety. Quote, those words never came out of my mouth. I don't know what people were talking about. I never said it was a drive-by. She says those young men carried me and saved my life. Eaton White's home now recuperating though she did appear at a church rally with Michael Brown's family. She also retained Mawan Porter, Florida-based attorney who specializes in cases involving police misconduct and personal injury. It's very interesting that the only young black man that were around saved her and it wasn't a drive-by and uh, but it's the cops the the local law enforcement that have taken that bullet for evidence it sounds a lot like thomas herbs doesn't it a lot like thomas herbs a lot like the uh, legislator out of chicago this year that says well maybe cops are killing some of these kids and a lot like the uh pregnant single mother that was killed on the bridge by some unknown hand again who left five other children as a single mother up for grabs to the state when somebody killed her and it's not gangs that are cashing in it's corporate counsel what does a gang have to benefit from murdering a single female? Absolutely nothing. What does corporate counsel have to gain from murdering a single mother female? Everything. Not only can they teach you to fear each other, they also get their hand in all of those children's lives. all of those children's lives she's a single mom and their function first is to turn her against their dad by specialty you know you don't get welfare if you're not single you don't get housing allotments if you're not single you don't get free schooling daycare assistance if you're not single and as they drive the female and the male apart they can prey on the children This is how you give up the garden. This is how the garden is taken. You buy into all that attorney fluff from the tree of knowledge, all those concepts. It's you killing each other. The, the hell it is. Corporate counsel is the only one with benefits. Governor Pilot there is the only one with benefits. General counsel, Congress. I'm not benefiting when you kill me. My children are not benefiting when you kill them. It's absolutely deplorable how this can occur for such a long time without accountability. Absolutely deplorable. Sick. Sick. Shame on you. 
There's NASDAQ it from it was just such a sad sad report from Market Watch. NASDAQ revisits March 2000 and it's the saddest party ever. The market was just point I think it was point eight percent away from the record high and it broke that record today. And nobody's celebrating. It's the greatest economy ever. It took a long time, but the NASDAQ deposit is plus 12%, 0.12%, just got back to where it was in the dot com days. That is, it, it's back to where it was March 31st, 2000. Those some 11% off the 5,048.62 peak, see March 10th. Still, where's the DJ and the shrimp platters? During those heady times, margaritas and massages flowed at Market Watch. Newsroom, transvestites served burgers at the Razorfish Bash, and Oracle's Christmas story took over the ritzy Fairmont in a grand display of excess. Alas, while the index says the party is back, the reality tells a different story. For one, those investors burned by the epic collapse may still be suffering some form of post-traumatic stress disorder, and nobody can blame them for that. If they're sitting on a 14-year pile of Cisco, Yahoo, and applied materials, they're probably ringing in this occasion by crying into a bottle of Thunderbird and slurring along to Johnny Cash's version of Hurt. That's because while Monday's headlines put the technology burst on blast, those three former high flyers, along with seven other notable downers, are sitting at least 50% below their levels from that fateful March 10th trading day. These aren't just cherry-picked underperformers, even the NASDAQ 100, which tracks the index 100 biz biggest companies, is down double digits from that point. Not to mention all the other reasons dark clouds hang over this party. Remember, these are the dog days of August, and the strength could be fleeting. As BTIG chief strategist Dan Greenhouse points out, can we just really read anything into this? 2010, 2011, 12, 13, and... The equity move in August's final 10 sessions was reversed in the subsequent 10 days. Perhaps that's all we need now. <laughs> Perhaps. <coughs> Excuse me. Not the Jones.com again. Ferguson, cops hand out three warrants per household every year. Alex Haber comments on the rather remarkable caseload of Ferguson's municipal court. You don't get $321 in fines and fees and three warrants per household from an about average crime rate. You get numbers like this from bull bullshit arrests, from jaywalking, and consent constant quote, low-level harassment involving traffic cops, court appearances, high fines, and the threat of jail for failure to pay, end quote. If you have money, for example, you can easily get a speeding ticket converted to a non-moving violation. But if you don't have money, it's often the start of a downward spiral that is hard to pull out of. If you are arrested and jailed, you probably lose your job and perhaps also your apartment, all because of a speeding ticket. We've all seen a number of stories like this recently, and it prompts a question. Why are police departments allowed to fund themselves with ticket revenue in the first place? Or red light camera revenue, or civil asset forfeit revenue, or any other kind of revenue that provides them with an incentive to be as hard ass as possible? Am I missing something when I think this makes no sense at all? This is sort of a genuine question. I know these police are common, but where did they come from? Are they deliberate, created by politicians who like the idea of giving their local cops an incentive to get tough? Were they mostly the idea of police departments themselves to figure the revenue from fines would provide a net boost in their annual funding? Or did they just accrete over time, popping up whenever there was a budget crisis and then never going away? Does anyone know? That's politics. Those are privateers. Those privateers attack and capture enemy vessels 
bring them in front of Admiral Key Courts for condemnation and sale because these are the high seas and everybody's been living in the United States of America. Style the chain of events, congressional actions. Those pirates are directed by corporate counsel to take out bottomry bonds. Bottomry bonds it makes the whole world go round. Diagnosis and repair. Diagnosis and repair. Cusive numbers. Cusive numbers. Ooh, the Devonshire Participation Program. That comes right out of Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation that these pirates on the high seas decided to write in there, pencil in there, pledging you, you, the United States of Being, to offset, discharge their congressional bankruptcy. Debenture participation program is a much, much, much nicer term than human trafficking or genocide or simply slavery. It sounds so pretty. Debenture participation. But that is a debt secured by your own earning power. That means that a bunch of farmers get together and say, you owe them this amount of money, and you're going to work on their farm until you pay it off. How is that working out for everybody? Honestly, I'm tired of witnessing children being slaughtered anywhere. I'm tired of witnessing children being raped and females being raped and trafficked across the globe by these attorneys bent on seeing the destruction of humanity. Tired of watching Beelzebub's children, Barabbas, as a slaughter, left and right, and then point the finger at humanity, and the evidence is right there. An FBI agent shot to death an 18 year old child period that's evidence if you want the why go talk to corporate counsel it was to discharge congressional bankruptcy because that state that area Ferguson has been called overhead by the same corporate government they called Poland overhead back in 1928. And you all know how that ended. In the United States Incorporated, they did it in 1802 with the Indemnification Convention. Indemnifying you, the human being. And saying you injured it before it injured you. Therefore, they're going to hold on to your estate for you. You're an infant. And by the time the 14th Amendment rolled around, written by that attorney, rat bastard, Lincoln, they insured the corporation, called it a person, and allowed you, the human being, the pleasure, the pleasure of being its slave, maintaining corporate welfare. This is all in accordance to the first and second welfare theorem. Sick. 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 Twisted ideas sold to everyone by the law merchant, tricking everybody out while still new concepts in that tree of knowledge it guarantees your civil death it guarantees your civil death if you're abjuring the realm if you're saying that's my daddy I love it I love it I love it I'm gonna go serve in its army got to protect that national security we'll be right back folks stick around hi and welcome back to the second hour of leaving the farm right here on revolution radio freedom slips.com where information never sleeps 
We are listener supported radio listeners. If you want to feel like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages, donate and chat, all that other good stuff. Visit our store. We're also brought to you. Tammypepperman.org, No Borders Radio at nobordersradio.co.uk. And if you'd like to donate to keep us on the net and on the air, please do so at tammypepperman.org through tamworthwebdevelopment.co.uk. They've got awesome, awesome products. Awesome products. If I can use it, anybody can use it. I broke my site and it's no longer broken. And that to me is everything. RT is reporting systematic militarization taking place in Ferguson. Militarization in Ferguson has very little to do with stopping any sort of looting and it has everything to do with the attempt to destroy and dismantle the democratic rights of the American people, reporter Andre Damon told RT. RT says, what was the atmosphere right after the accident? What was the first people's and police's action? Andrew Damon says, I was on a, on a scene and about an hour after the second shooting took place and the scene was one of real outrage and anguish. That is, residents saw this as a continuation of a wave of police violence that had been ongoing since the shooting of Mike Brown involving the militarization of the police, the calling in of the National Guard, the imposition of a state emergency it was just the latest event in the string of police violence. RT says, what about on the side of the police? Is there any sign of further militarization? Audrey says, from the standpoint of what I saw over the course of a period in which I was in Ferguson, I saw a systematic escalation of the police presence and the military presence. First there was the imposition of a curfew and the announcement of a state of emergency then the calling in of the National Guard when I was there the first day that the National Guard was called in at the staging center. There were the ones in, they were in ones and twos. The next day there was a dozen Humvees and soldiers walking around in large numbers. You really got a sense that, that there was systematic militarization that is taking place in the city. RT, in your opinion, what is the real aim of militarization? Audrey says the basic aim of the militarization that is taking place and the crackdown that is taking place is not as it is presented to prevent looting or any sort of crime, but to prevent the population, the people of the city, from using their constitutional right to assemble. If you go to downtown Ferguson right now, you're not allowed to stand still. In broad daylight, on one of the days I was there, a photographer from Getty's Images was arrested because he was taking a picture of a group of people who stopped to hold signs and the police told them to disperse even though the police were blocking traffic completely. They said that the people on the streets had to keep moving because they were blocking traffic. This has very little to do with stopping any sort of looting and it has everything to do with the attempt at destroying and dismantling the democratic rights of the American people. You got Stasi agents on the ground in Ferguson, Missouri. They're not there to prevent looting. They're not there to do anything except for protecting corporate interests. You know, the call out to stop looting and stop humanity from removing these attorneys and these businesses. There's something wrong in that. Horribly, horribly wrong. That is Nazi Germany. It's not like Nazi Germany. It's not like Colombia and, or Cambodia and Pol Pot. Cops gunned down an 18-year-old child. They've been beating and 
very likely gunning down that female that got shot in the head. Nobody else was around. You got a child being shot by police and 40 FBI agents called in to surround corporate counsel and the FBI agent that is responsible for this 18 year old's death. You've got law enforcement that's stuck in the middle may or may not be innocent. Again, I was attempted on in Spokane, local corporate council. That's after Northwest Justice Project got up to Colville. However, I've been sicked upon several times, and each time I made a friend out of law enforcement that did not attempt on me. I'll say it again. Law enforcement, the majority, are there to protect humanity. They've just been turned to be adhering to corporate policy, and they are innocent. FBI agents, on the other hand, are not. And this is also evidenced in the 1929 Geneva Convention. Law enforcement officers are also held as prisoners of war. Agents are not. Our detectives are also trained at Quantico, militarized. Any militarized police force must, 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 must be psychologically evaluated. We'll get to the bottom of these things. Psychopathy affects at most 3% of an, a population. That's how it's always been. Always been. In your local law enforcement, you will not find any higher numbers. You've got to remove the federal ambiance to get at the truth of things. And even then, the agent in Chicago back in 2012. He came in expecting to find somebody else. I was absolutely vilified. He thought I was a terrible, terrible monster. At the end of the night, he was offering to buy me a gun to protect myself. And I declined his offer because I'm not violent. I don't have necessity for a gun. I'd rather just volunteer to be whatever. And you can evidence your own works and be done with it. I don't have to respond with violence. That'll come upon you shorty, shortly enough. That agent turned out to be a very beautiful soul. Huge, huge teddy bear of man. At first, of course, it's very, very intimidating. Very intimidated. Ultimately, he evidenced himself 
is of course human. His little, his little children. <laughs> We're in college now. Then that officer was stuck between a rock and a hard place after realizing the corruption. Here he's got two kids in college and a mortgage of his own. And he said he only stayed there because he was forced to economically. And we've seen lots of that, lots and lots of that. However, it gets worse in that that state of mind, they, they, if they know that they have you pretty much with your testicles in a vice grip, they can do anything they want. And the, the usual tactics, tactic is to come after that agent or officer about to retire with the IRS or some other form of war in order to get out those assets. Very sad to see, and of course, sad to see all of these officers learning the hard way. I mean, it, it has been terrible this last year. The, the corporate council, they'll stop at nothing. We're watching whole departments being closed down and, you know, you can't get your retirement now and all of these hoops and it all goes back to ERISA, Employee Retirement Insurance Security Act. That thing took out the original trustee, like the union or whoever you were working for and saving for retirement. And it made that local judge the trustee over that account, the municipal judge the trustee. So, sadly, these officers are realizing who their friends are and who's, who their friends are not. Because they're now witnessing the local muni judge who raised them. They're on the receiving end, and it's, it's very sad to see. And so we were trying to reach them and let them know, hey, look, Corporate counsel is not your friend. Friend of the court is friend of that bank there. That's not your friend. Corporate counsel is Satan. He, I spoke to one, Scott K. Summers. He says, I require a diagnosis before I can discharge congressional bankruptcy. That means that if my child is raped, it's corporate counsel doing that or directing it. That means if my house burns down, it's corporate counsel doing that or directing it. That's called guarantee insurance. If I'm flooded out, that's corporate counsel. And the evidence out of Florida is, is absolutely profound. A principal at a school burned part of a school down a while back. That's guarantee insurance. Corporate counsel moves on development and industrialization. And if something's in its way, say a community is already established and there's no money coming in for corporate counsel, why? They've got to burn it to the ground. They have to foreclose on everybody, take everybody's kids, burn down some houses, make some room for some new development, shoot an 18-year-old kid, whatever it takes. Got to get that money coming in. Arrest a rock hole, so seven minor children can enjoy the perverted affections of Judge Mary Kay Wagner and her cronies running the sex trafficking industry out of Wisconsin. Oh, did I say that?
You know, it's like a constant game of hotter and warmer. So I'll do a show, and if I'm close to my target, well, Revolution Radio YouTube channel gets shut down. If I get even closer, it shut down the next one. Oh, I'm hot now! I'm hot! How's that working out for everybody? Trying to shut up the truth. Trying to stop me. You've been doing it for years. I'm used to this. It's become commonplace. But now. Now. The market is amazing. For some reason. Corporate counsel and all these hedge fund managers. They're not happy. I don't know why they wouldn't be happy. Come on, be happy. These are times of sunshine and North Korean tourism. We love North Korea. Oh my gosh. Ban Ki-moon is like the greatest. No, not Ban Ki-moon. What's his name? Uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, Kim Jong-un. Ban Ki-moon, I see that he's attempting to invest in wartime again as Secretary General of that hospitality regime. Trying to pick up some prisoners of war there, Mr. Moon. Remember, evidence is what it's all about. And once it's done, it's done, and it cannot be taken back. It doesn't just disappear. It's a very, very hard lesson for all those in the upper administration as they suddenly found themselves being cannibalized and rolled on by each other and themselves it's been sick sick watching this it's like watching hyenas at the feed or rabid hyenas at the feed is even better description because there's no rhyme or reason for the majority of these things Sick, sick, and thrive on controversy. FBI has beheaded people as Saudis. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Book two Church Committee reports. Start there. Martin Luther King was murdered by these same FBI agents. The same ones that gone down. The child in Ferguson, Missouri. Same agents. Same agents who terrorized Dr. Martin Luther King beyond terrorism. Beyond terrorism. In the action of genocide. I've once again killed another one of our children. We have to corporate counsel discharging congressional bankruptcy. I think I've got Bo with me. I got you with me, Bo. Yeah. Sorry I couldn't make it sooner. I was busy uh, playing Glorious Leader and got lost in the time. That is a beautiful song. I was listening to that earlier and I I pray it's playing on the uh, song. No, yeah. I'm talking about the game. Oh, or Glorious oh, Leader. Game. Oh, yeah, I haven't played it yet. I just saw it. Uh, well, you get to play Kim Jong-un as he works his way through the streets of Pyongyang, uh, you know, single-handedly uh, rooting out the uh, evils of capitalism. And then um, and uh, Dennis Rodman even comes in there to help for a little bit. It's pretty cool. Oh, that sounds cool. Does he have one of those flamethrowers? you got to have a flamethrower in the lower chambers of the exchequer. I mean, that's like a requirement. Yeah, I haven't played it uh, that far yet. I think there's, you know, a lot of goodies in there. Uh, I don't know, people should just try it. I mean, you know, and so that ties in with the stock market being at like an all-time high, nobody's celebrating. 
uh, flashback to the agreed entry with Norton Holding. Ha ha ha. And, you know, uh, no wonder nobody's celebrating, but, you know, I mean, it's now it should, it should, should uh, point out uh, the fact that uh, Kim Jong-un has really been on your side all this time, hasn't he? Absolutely. Because what does capitalism mean? It comes from the word capit, which is a head count, and they're counting human beings as deposits to offset their congressional bankruptcy. Right, but Congress was undercutting Kim Jong-un all that time, as well as the American chief, well, the yeah. national state, the United Nations. And that's, why he's, that's why he's been so ticked off. Absolutely, and they've been trying to shut him down, his power. He's got nuclear power over there, and he... he he considers the safety. His country would like to use nuclear power to power their country. And and these Congress critters keep coming in and sanctioning him and making squeezing him, putting a squeeze on him. And um, that's that's not a very good business model at all. If if you want uh, you know it's kinda of like biting the hand that feeds you, I guess, is is the best simplification. Why would you do that? Why would you just squeeze Kim Jong-un, you know, all this time. And, and make him out to be the bad guy all the time in the absolutely. corporate uh, Western media. Absolutely, and they picked on him and picked on him and picked on him. And he just, he's, he's never done anything. No, no, and, and now it's just Have like, you got more freedom there? Uh, as we observed in that one video, she was ch this lady was chasing down a... IRS or government agent or something down in the street, you know, uh, heck, here they carry uh, shotguns. Right, right, and she was freer there than she is in the, in the United States Incorporated, and, and um, you know, I, I hope they're playing that music. I, I suggest, you know, over uh, the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea's radio that they play What a Wonderful World, because that's like my favorite song ever. Yeah, and sing it in uh, the language there though you know right and whistle while you work and what was the other one um earlier today oh yeah a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down yeah oh i'd love to hear that um maybe sang by uh um kim's beautiful wife who has a beautiful singing voice absolutely i hope they played on those buses too because that, that would be beautiful yeah i wish we, you know got more pictures of his wife in the media and you know, even Putin's got a good-looking wife. Um, but we always got to look at Michelle Obama. Uh, Putin, he, they make him look worse and worse every day. Maybe she has an Adam's apple because that detracts from her robotic atmosphere. Maybe they're trying to present that she's human with an Adam's apple. Or it's human. Well, we all know she's an attorney, so... I don't know, but... Uh, I'm telling you, it is... I mean, there's celebrities now that have haircuts like him. I saw that this last week. It was pretty cute. Unless they were photoshopped. And even that, it, it looked neat. I thought it was it was a neat representation. Yeah, so then um, I see that uh, FedEx has three more indictments down on the table against them for money laundering to go along with those drug charges from last month. Yeah, they owe a lot of money. Last year they were trying to uh, intercede in the delivery of, of uh, lawful mail to the House of Lords. And, uh, no, I don't know if there's an end to that one because, you know, you remember that phone call. It was the craziest phone call ever. I answer the phone, yeah. and here's FedEx telling me they couldn't find the House of Lords. It disappeared. Something burned down. And We've got it uh, recorded, don't we? We need to put that one up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I've got it up on YouTube. It's just it was an insane conversation. I've Did got, we put it on YouTube? I believe so. I'll check after the show and, and find out. But, um, don't put it on Revolution channel. Oh, that's right. They don't have a channel now. Yeah, for me. Thanks moment. to Espionage, uh, 28 USC... Um, 794. I mean, the or, no, eight, States, that's 18 USC, isn't it? I made the United States, what, 66 billion in one week? That's a great wage. So, they want to play espionage games. They yeah. Pay the I guess for the new, um, pay the for, the, for the new listeners here, uh, just to recap what happened in uh, September of 2013, now, going on a year ago, uh, we had sent, uh, uh, you know, one of the final uh, nails in the coffin um, off 
to uh, the House of Lords via FedEx. I mean, because that's the quickest way to get it across the uh, ocean there. And um, FedEx, of course, being a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, they didn't like that. They're going there, and, and they were trying to tell us that the House of Lords burned down or something. Yeah, the House of Lords had to go retrieve the package from whatever airport or facility. <laughs> but, I mean, that was yeah, yeah, but the worker on the ground was saying that the... the Place where they take delivery uh, was, was, it was burned gone. down. Yeah, it, was, it was just it was gone or burned down. No forwarding address, nothing. And it was like yeah, of course the House of Lords is so hard to find over there in, in uh, the UK. Yeah, uh, absolutely, which, just right around London there. Right, which of course you know limits their access to the Treasury again because they're they're perpetrating espionage in front of the eyes of the Treasury, the House of Lords. And it's, it's kind of obvious what's going on here. And then the House of Lords, they actually had to go out and retrieve the package, which, that's, that's irritating. Bless their heart for doing that's that. That's irritating. We were sorry that you had to go through that. But uh, on the other side of the coin, um, you're finally getting your treasury built back up over there, aren't you? Oh, my gosh. Did you see that earlier uh, this month? It was 394 million pounds per day running back into the treasury it's just so amazing because that, that and in, that's in money the, that's going to go back to humanity right in the first um edition of black's law dictionary congress actually admitted draining the treasury down to one million pounds they had drained it by 1891 they had drained the rest of uh, the treasury that's right look down. at uh, look up uh, black's law first edition from 1891 under the word treasury. treasury. Yeah, and it, it gives that example, and I'm like, that And they took that out of uh, the second edition. Right. And that, that's appalling. <laughs> that's absolutely, absolutely, without a doubt, appalling, because here's the contract with the Treasury that says they're going to maintain humanity on general welfare, and they're, they're assuming that humanity is just spending like crazy, when in reality, Congress just made a new routing system and routed everything all over, and then rerouted it offshore through the IRS and all of these different embezzlement schemes and um, it's, it's been interesting to watch absolutely interesting to watch in the reaction of the House of Lords and the Treasury because that, that's sick it's like paying a babysitter that goes in and rapes your children on video and then it you know kills them and, and uh, stuffs them into your washing machine and leaves them there for you to find when you get home okay. That's yeah, exactly how, what Congress has been doing. Yeah, how about speaking of which, the lady who uh, uh, let this, uh, uh, you know, twenty-some-year-old sleep with her eleven-year-old daughter who got pregnant. It was in the Daily right. Mail the day I saw. Selling kids. Uh, Selling kids. She got, she got, she got uh, time though, so that was sick, a good thing. Sick, foul, these, these mothers pretending to be female and they're just psychopaths they, they're missing a frontal lobe they don't care they want the benefits of having children and enough is enough and I'm, I'm very very thankful to see these charges now coming down against these psychopathic females that pretend to be mothers and loving children when in reality they'll sell them to the highest bidder absolutely sick absolutely sick deplorable again shame on you it's not even the right uh, phrase you should be skinned alive for your works and actions against children that's foul absolutely foul horrifying second on Michigan is said to be getting rid of its tank according to BuzzFeed Good. G O O D is uh, tweeting trampoline sidewalks would make your city 1000% cooler. I think this should be done in gold. I, I really do. I think that everything paved in gold would be much, much much prettier. I don't want to walk on a trampoline sidewalk. I'm 
on everything. New York Times is reporting, of course, on Ferguson unrest, poll show sharp racial divide. Absolutely, that is the intent of corporate counsel. Look, look, a white guy did that to a black guy. No, wait a second. That was an FBI agent, a white one, that whacked a black human. And then attempted to sell to the sheeple that humanity is racist. Humanity is not racist. Congress, corporate counsel, FBI agents that work on behest of Congress and corporate counsel are racist and they need to be removed from your communities as swiftly as possible via arrest or deportation or whatever else needs to occur. But they should not be and have access to human beings in any way, shape, or form. Because they are very, very detrimental and the absolute threat and danger to humanity. Everything okay? Oh yeah. Good. Oh yeah. Just uh, well, some certain uh, people must be working their butts off, butts off uh, with all this activity we see going on. So what else is going on? Uh, I, I. I, tr I tried to cover everything on my plate yesterday. I think I got through it. Although it was a pretty rough show here uh, that I had yesterday. I thought it was beautiful. And then uh, apparently, because of that show, uh, Revolution's YouTube channel got taken down again for the second time this week. Well, the first one was the last show of... Um, July. July of mine. That they put the strike on, and I put all of the links to all the stories I covered to cover my rear end, so they can't say, "Well, you didn't quote us, and so we're well, gonna." Well, they know. don't have any right to royalty anyway. That's yeah, I, mean. I know, but I was just trying to be polite, and plus, people that want to click on the links and read the full article, I can do that. Right. That's all I've ever done. But it was a truthful show, of course, and then. Uh, by last night, Hawk was in my Skype. I didn't get that until today uh, because I was busy otherwise and I didn't see it. But um, it, it was very interesting to, to read that and, and come into the fray today to realize that indeed the FBI has shut down another Revolution YouTube channel to silence the truth, which it doesn't go away, I'm still here. Yeah, and all my YouTubes that I reference, you know, all those videos too, all the archives over the past, uh, I don't know, six months or so, just gone. Right, right. Uh, for anybody who's missing the archives, um, you can grab them over at freedomslips.com, and um, they're all there. It's just so sad to see our YouTube channels coming down again. And of course, uh, you can find us, the Bone Rocco Show, and Leaving the Farm at our YouTube channels, of course. Yeah, I'm going to have to start, you know, reloading some old ones or putting them, um, you know, at least putting the new ones up. Right. So, it's no and... more work for me. I just like doing the little clips and referencing the whole video. Like, right. we'll watch on Revolutions. Uh, YouTube channel. Now there's the, two fee schedules included in the high school <coughs> top fee schedule and I need to remind the local corporate council and local FBI and whatever else. Um, the gold fee schedule goes for your administrators. However, there's a silver fee schedule as well and, and that one is very interesting. So when we're forced to uh, do uh, all of these things, uh, research and, and extra lengths and stuff that's 75,000 uh, silver dollars lawful dollars there that um, you know per hour per hour yeah and that was based on trust about it'd be nice to finally you know get reimbursed for all those hours in front of the the uh, typewriter if you will right right not just that crap we were spending you know, a hundred bucks a pop to ensure delivery to the House of Lords. And we yeah, which, which FedEx, uh, you know, 
doesn't deliver anyway. Right. So. <laughs> right. Uh, they look like they're paying for it now. It looks like they're taking the back out of their hides, which is interesting to see. Um, it's just, it's been a wild journey. It's been an absolutely... Yeah, Hell Wars actually call, covered that. Cause he said he used to work at FedEx up there in Canada, and an iPhone or something would go missing. Uh, you know, from Fargo, and then they'd, he, he'd be under the spotlight. They'd be um, questioning him, interrogating him like the Inquisition, he said. Right. And so he finally left out of that FedEx, you know. I mean, he put he handed over all his evidence, and then they go arrest the guy in Fargo. Uh, right. Okay. I told him it was a good thing he got out of there when he did. Well, think about that, that poor, you know, FedEx employee that was given the script the day that they had to call me. You know, I, I don't know what happened. I just... And, and she sounded really upset, you know, I just burned out, it's not there anymore, um, you know, and I, and I told her at that time, well, they are members of the CFR, of course things are going to disappear and impede the travel of uh, communications, because that's the purpose of the Council on Foreign Relations, they limit foreign relations, except for they can't do that when you're dealing with two sovereign states. Yeah. That's espionage. That's a double barrel caker there. Because uh, I came in as a sovereign state, and obviously you, so did you. Well, the House of Lords is, the Treasury itself is a sovereign state. It doesn't right, belong right. to, you know. So now they're dealing with, well, two, three, depending on which way you look at it. Well, Four, five. Bankruptcy fraud, and. I mean, uh, Phil's fraud. case was in there. Yep. So was Rocco's. Absolutely. So, I mean, we're really dealing with all these foreign states, our sovereign states now. Yeah, it's terrible. How how many nationals fit on 100 to 150 double decker buses? You know, I estimated like 50 or 60 per bus, but yeah, thinking about it, it's probably much more. So, you know, it could be very well have been like 10,000. Uh, Nationals. Nationals that we're talking about there in Pyongyang. They're being and they, trafficked. And they shut down traffic, you know, in the long story at North Korea News, nknews.com, which you have to have a subscription to, which I was highly disappointed when I, you know, found that out and couldn't yeah, get can back we, to the story. Can we give us some love? Give us some love. Where are you? I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Donnell, I listen to your wife's song backwards, and I know what it means when when the snakes come home to roost. Yeah, that was so funny. That's weird how we yank a dick, and that was such a funny one. <coughs> I'm your biggest fan. It's just been, it's been amazing. And, and now, his, and his album was the first parody album ever to top the Billboard charts, going number one. Okay, and uh, it's called Mandatory Fun, and uh, I mean, just 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 look at that cover of that thing. I mean, it says it all in the cover. Uh, now, some people are saying that that song, Foil, is a hit against the truthers, but uh, I urge you to watch that video a little more carefully. I don't really think Absolutely. so. Absolutely. No, I, I... It's like a, it's a double... Uh, you know, play on, on words. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the funniest part this week is the, the whaling merchants again. We've got whaling merchants all over the place. And um, back channel agents all over the place. You know, why? Oh, why? Why is this happening to me? And, you know, one of them, it was very interesting, and, and she came to me and, and said, have you heard about this process? And I'm like, I'm not interested. And then she said, okay, and went away. It's nice. You know, no no pressure there. It's nice. Yeah, well, and that could have just have been innocent sheeple looking to, you know, get themselves out of this legal quagmire because it's, it's, uh, it's a labyrinth. Well, They're legal, you get sucked into that legal system and you buy into it. You just entered into a labyrinth from hell. Well, and a lot of these agents, you know, I've been showing them the evidence of agents being cannibalized, and 
you know, all of a sudden then I get the, huh? Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, okay, Scooby. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have been an agent <laughs> to begin with, huh? Like that Scott K. Summers insurance? <laughs> yeah, I notice I have a lot less uh, of a uh, friendly following on YouTube these days. Oh, yeah. I've, I, I've dropped down to almost nobody. Nobody likes to comment or, you know. Absolutely. It, it said that. They said that in the mainstream. So many are just paid trolls. Paid trolls. Okay, well, think about it. Over 12,000 subscribers and, and, and my videos get usually, you know, they're whittled down to maybe like 300 each on the average now. Right. And then uh, immediate dislikes and these troll behaviors and it's just it's been interesting. And then on the flip side, you got Obama and Michelle over there, you know, hanging pork chops around their dog's nuts so they can pet it without a bite. Yeah, what were they saying? Michelle's followers on Twitter were it's like up to eighty percent were just sock puppet accounts. Right. Yeah, I've seen a lot more advertisements for that kind of thing lately where they sell friends and lights and whatever. Yeah, I can get thousands of views on my videos too. I just have to pay for it. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. It's so sick. <laughs> so sick. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Hire, hire a promotion firm. And that's another thing that they did in, in Ferguson this last week. They, they brought in a PR firm. And then all of a sudden, Eric Holder's there, and he didn't do a good job, and Obama's there, and their PR firm fell down. They didn't do anything. A um, little bit of lip service. Excuse me. A child is dead. He was killed by corporate counsel and the actions of their law enforcement. Let's take care of this according to the evidence at hand. We're not going to cover this up and put on a big show and have Obama kissing babies and Holder doing whatever Holder does and pretending about racism. But but they had they had what uh, um, Jesse Jackson there. Absolutely, and last night it was interesting when you were talking about him being a, a Mason. Yeah, that was that was surprising. Yeah, to me. Jesse Jackson, and you know everybody wants to give <laughs> like Dennis Rodman the bad rap with his relationship with with Kim Jong Un, but like, it's Scottie Pippen. From um, Rodman's old team, that's the Mason. Right. And, and number 33. Yep. And the NAACP put their hand in the chute and they said, well, we want a piece of this action. What action do you want? It already happened. The cop already killed an 18-year-old child. And now the NAACP wants to put its hand in there and pretend like this is a racist issue and they want to cash in on this stuff? Uh, yeah. Almost... Simultaneously, I believe there was uh, the entire opposite of the spectrum. I believe out of Oregon, uh, uh, an officer of color shot uh, some Caucasian guy, and there was nothing about it in the media. Right. Nothing. Right. And we need to take care of all of these things. These are FBI agents slaughtering human beings, ISIS, Hamas, uh, Ferguson, whatever. KGB, get out of that would be way Adam Kokesh, KGB, KGB. Yeah, all of them, all of them. They've got to go. They don't need to be in our communities. They don't need to be around children. They don't need to be around females. They don't need to be around males. We only require law enforcement upholding the public law. That's it. It's very very simple. Yeah, of course, that's why I believe uh, Ron Paul was uh, allowed to hang around so long or whatever. His function was to, you know, garner the other, the third path to Rome, um, uh, you know, the Constitution, you know, because, of course, Republicans and Democrats alike, you know, have been so far away from the, you know, even their own Constitution for so long. And, well, here's Ron Paul to save the day. We'll get you back to Rome with this Constitution. Justin's reporting this just in. Uh, Justin says, I think we finally talked him into it. Screw you two. Make one of your own. Still in progress, but we'll be located at revolutionradio.tv. Um, yeah, it just takes an incredible amount of bandwidth, that's all. Absolutely, but uh, we've got a lot of supporters that'll help with the uh, 
uh, things like that, right? I mean, that's hopefully our supporters will pitch in and and uh, what is happening? Probably a server, another server. So you'd be spreading I, all of that information like uh, YouTube. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, well, it's, that's what it is. It's a massive amount of servers and bandwidth mostly. Because, you know, one computer these days is like a, a, a server of 10 years ago. But, you know, they're so powerful, really. It's like they can put the data out there. They just have to have the bandwidth over the internet to transmit. Right. And you can go to our chat, everybody, uh, over at freedomslips.com. When something occurs like this and, and Hawk runs into uh, economic stress or financial difficulty, thanks to the FBI or whatever else is trying to censor us, Hawk will refine the uh, donation amount or the goal amount as he spreads it out through the year. So um, This is what happens when you are not endorsed by the Broadcasting Board of Governors, by the way. Absolutely, and is evidence, now, again, of fourth-generation warfare. I mean, remember last year when they were hitting him with uh, medical costs and all sorts of stuff? His, his daughter ended up having an emergency, and helicopter was called because he's so far out. And here, poor Hawk, you know, he, he works for the state and stuff, the EMT, that kind of thing, and yet his insurance don't cover, you know, what was it, five grand he was he was socked with last year? I believe it was somewhere in that amount. But, uh, you know, we, we got our listeners will chip in, they always have before, and we'll, we'll keep going. Just go to our chat room, and over on the uh, left-hand side, of course, is the goal amount, and just check it out, and if we're, if we're low, please, please consider donating. And you can donate also by... Uh, uh, purchasing the archives, I think it's it's less than five dollars a month or somewhere around five dollars a month for the uh, raw archives, and um, that's before you know editing down and making them fit for YouTube and all that crap anyway, and and um, that's a good way to support the station as well. Of course, silver. Anybody out there wanting to send off money? I'm Absolutely. Sure. Just so, to, on the um, just goes to support. Hawk. Hawk's the one that's working his tail off to make this dream a reality, and he's kept it up now for I don't know, better part of uh, four or five years, and I'm, that's a tremendous uh, amount of work, and of course the expense. Then so, remember, they nailed our YouTube channel uh, last. What was it? February? No, January somewhere. We had to go over again because the FBI took us down. I mean, we've got all of this evidence and, I mean, it's just, uh, it's actually quite comical uh, when you look back on these things. Um, there's been times when there's so much static and crap until they got the fee schedule and all of these things are now going around to Hawk's YouTube channel, assuming that that's going to keep everybody out of hot water. It's not because that's this is the way that we present the public law. This is the way that we present Leaving the Farm and Bull and Rocco Show and it is indeed espionage against sovereign state. It's not a good idea. Is it a good idea, Bull? Well I think I don't know. That X seems Just watch what happens to Rick Perry and Answer the question yourself, I guess, as it plays out. That seems to be having second thoughts. Uh, that attorney that, uh, remember the one that scraped the fingernails off and oh, was yeah, on the lam? Yeah, they're, crazy. I just saw that they're extraditing her back to Colorado. Wow, she's been, is ICE transporting her by any chance? Oh, remember, we were watching I'll a lot of ICE that. cases uh, because, you know, in 1933, they escaped as prisoners of war by coming up under with an oath under the Banking Act, 12 U.S.C. subsection 73. And, um, you know, it's been interesting to watch how they treat these illegal immigrants. And, and that's something that's so ironic as these attorneys have continuously, continuously talked about illegal immigration and, and all of these things and pit humanity against itself and each other. 
when in reality they're the only ones that are he anywhere illegally because they have an oath to the bar. They have a fictional government and they're not citizens of, of anywhere else. And, and um, that's the only time you can imprison somebody under the 1929 Geneva Convention is if they have attempted escape as a prisoner of war without having patriated somewhere else. That's right. Most of the grim facts. It's not about that separation of powers and the United States federal government and all that bull hockey and they're still ramming down kids' throats in the uh, public uh, Hitler youth camps indoctrination system. We saw some more school closings this week as well. Charter School in uh, Indianapolis is going to be closing uh, due to uh, fraudulent test or cheating on tests there the claim was the handwriting was there's some adult handwriting on some of these tests yeah they were retarding the children and then trying to sneak in some some extra funding there they're just deplorable not only do they human traffic and then they cheat on tests to make more money and all of these things they use children for but there's no stopping them they, they have absolutely no boundary or or uh Impulse like, control, you know, yeah. it is the evidence of psychopathy. And you, you, and you, you have to, <coughs> Excuse me. you have to take in consideration on that uh, indictment against the federal state. Uh, Department of Education was right in there, you know, with Henry Kissinger and the rest of them. The good old boys club, we'll call them. Absolutely. It's good old boys. They're having a bad old day. Um, it's sad to see uh, these bad days occurring uh, recently. They're trying hard to, you know, focus the attention elsewhere. I know that uh, that thing this morning um, when I got up, uh, it was amazing to see that, you know, all of a sudden here's Rick Perry and he's screaming about ISIS possibly crossing the border right in the middle of his indictment he, he attempts this fear mongering and, and screaming out like chicken little it's, it's, it's so sad to see his last attempt well you can't indict me you need me to save you from the border crossings of illegal ISIS immigrants yeah terrorist attacks threatening terrorist attacks the sky is falling ladies and gentlemen and I Steve I mean Rick Perry and the only one capable of saving your plebeian rectums. Absolutely. And in 2012, the FBI came out and said, look, we're the extremists. There's no harm. It's all in the bag. And, of course, same year, CIA came out and said that they were the underwear bomber. And uh, these schematics are money-making schematics. If you are in fear, you're going to cry out for Rick Perry to save you. We need a governor. We need you all. Don't go away from me. I might be attacked by a terrorist. See, everybody needs a hobby. And, you know, since they continually uh, uh, continue to hold on to uh, our beloved sovereign state, Rocco, as uh, a prisoner of war, as evidenced, there's no charges standing against him. He's harmed nobody under the public law. He has his own government. You know, they continue to hold him as a prisoner of war. Continue to hold my kids uh, by uh, court process. Um, I you know, so, so so the hobby I got is just uh, continue, continually indicting a general counsel, corporate counsel, the, this whole thing, the foreign state, because there's nothing to else to do. They made my life miserable, so... I'm trying to tell them. Kids, I, when I see whatever the kids, they got to do to each other, when I see the babies show up in my hands, I stop all efforts, and um, we don't we don't have an issue after that. If you don't want to be held accountable, stop kidnapping children. Well, it's yeah, it's too, it's too late now, now, well, boy. They would have smart. If they would have been smart, they would have cut their losses uh, about three years ago. Well, apparently they're not smart, are they? Just now they attempted the same thing in Ferguson in front of the whole world and the world got to witness corporate counsel and its Stasi agents. I guess they're doing everybody a favor by showing the level of their criminality right now. Well, this is the revelation after all. 
what it's all about. Sounds like we're surrounded by angels. Yeah, well, I, I sure hope those angels are good at peeling skin because that's I'd like to see some revelation of underneath them uh, turning skins. Kim Jong-un, we love you. Everybody be well. <laughs>